Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hello, Mrs. Farmer. How are you? How are you today? Oh, good. You know what? A heat wave. It might break 30 today. Uh huh. I'm still a little cold, but I'll, it's almost 40. You know what? Though this this feels super warm yeah. compared to what we've had. And being that the end of winter is not too far away, a long time ago I did a segment on tapping maple trees, but that was years ago. So I thought, you know, it's time to update that, and it's time to go out. Not too long ago we did a tree identification. That's we right. out in the woods. Well, it was a lot warmer than it is today. Now, in a little while, you're going to see a bunch of snow. We're on the porch up here, mm -hmm. and we've actually got a cowboy cooking recipe we're going to share with you today that has to do with syrup. Hmm. All right, let me ask you something, Mrs. Farmer. Yes. That's one jug, one gallon. How many gallons, if it was nothing but sugar maples, and, and the sugar content was high in the sap, Okay. how many gallons of sap would it take to make that one gallon? 50 million. Two. I don't know. I have no idea. That's a good guess. <laughs> 50 million or two? 10. 40. Wow. That's if the sugar content is high. Right. If you have red maples, that will work. Silver okay. maples. But the sugar ratio is a little bit lower, so it might take 50. Wow. So on and so forth. Now, I have got some maples here. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Right. Other species that people tap to get sap. Somebody the other day mentioned in Denmark, and we'll have to look this up to make sure, but they use birch trees predominantly. Really? And in different parts of the country where there are no maples, mm -hmm. they might use that. Now, there's going to be some conversation today, a lot of talk, because we're going to show you how to do some things. But the first thing we have to do is identify the tree. Later on, we're going to show you how to build some things that we got, hang them on the tree, show you how to tap the tree and collect the sap. But first, you have to identify the tree. Let's bring out a quick segment real quick, show you how to identify and mark a tree. Now, I just took some red paint. You can do whatever you want. You can hang a little tag on it. Yeah. But to me, I want to be able to look in the woods like I'm looking right now, and I see 60 yards out there. There's a tree, and I see another one right over there. I want to see it from a distance. Now, it's not going to hurt that tree. Right. Just a little bit of paint on the outside. So let's learn how to identify, mark, and then we'll come back to this. Right, let's look at some maple leaves. Let's look at this branch right here and look how they're individually coming out. You see that? Yeah. And look, there's three main veins here. Now here's your oak leaf. Now there are white oaks and red oaks. You can see the obvious difference there. Now when I'm talking about 10 inches, I'm talking about circumference through the tree. Yeah. So obviously these, now that's, that's nine inches right there. Oh yeah. So these are well beyond, obviously. And I'm going to mainly use mature trees. There's not going to be any doubt with what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and mark these. So we're going to know that these are the trees we're going to use. Just that simple. We don't even measure that. All right, let's find another one. Okay, now, you didn't know a maple tree before. Right. From an oak. That's right. Didn't pay attention. From sassafras, whatever. All right, look up. What do you think this is? It's a maple. See how quickly? I learned. See how quickly you You made learned? me look at the leaves. And we know, obviously, this is a big enough tree. So within sight of that, so we can all see them on the same side. All right, now that you got the eye for it, find me another one. Straight across. Yep. Look, look around. You see any more? They're everywhere. There's <laughs> one right there. So being that we're right in this area, if you have a lot of tubing, think about this, Mickey. If we get a little more tubing, and we have a big bucket down here low. Right. We can just buy extra half inch tubing. Okay. Run those three here, run this one here, run that one here, and they can all go into one collective bucket. I like it's that. It's a lot of tubing, yeah. but, but if you find a bunch in one area, why not? So let's find some more and let's mark some more. Ooh, I see another one up there. All right, let's go down here. So what I'm thinking is the reality of the situation is we don't use a whole lot of syrup. We can start eating more pancakes. And you like your waffles every day. <laughs> but if you're making it yourself you gotta have and it's it. natural and it's real, you, you know where it came from. That. So I'm thinking the little tiny bottles okay. as opposed to doing it a gallon at a time. So let's do a quarter at a time and store it. And this thing has a long shelf life. Right. But as we collect this, that's the only ingredient. There's no additions. Really? That's it. You boil it down. So you take this, we'll build a fire outside. We'll find us an old kettle 
and we'll cook this stuff down. You skim off the top, kind of mm -hmm. the bitter stuff as you go right. along, and it reduces down like anything with sugar. Right. It reduces down, reduces down until it gets the right color and the right thickness. You pour it off. Let's get a spoon Boom. and eat it. Pancakes. There you go. <laughs> so we'll be back to follow up on this. And I'm telling you what, in a very, very, very short amount of time, 30, 40 trees, bam. Right. So we got maple trees. Right. That's cool. Mm -hmm. The next step is to go out and tap them and so on and so forth. But other trees that people have tapped before, I've heard people talk about sycamores, but black really? walnut. Hmm. I've also had people tell me about taking shagbark hickory and taking it and boiling it. You can get a type of syrup really? out of the bark there. Now let's talk about where I got this stuff from. I got this from River Ridge Products. They're out of Wisconsin. And here's basically what it looks like. Let's just go ahead and build one, Nikki. Okay. We have our receptacle here, which is a heavy duty, food grade plastic bag. And I like dealing with these because they're right on the tree, attached right. to the tree. There's not a lot that can go wrong with tubing, so on and so forth. And we're doing it on such a small scale that why not? Okay. All right, now what we're gonna do is go up to the top of this thing. We're gonna gather all that around the top. The top. We're gonna take a zip tie. You see where this is, Nikki, right uh -huh. here? We're gonna put that together and then pull out as tight as we can in that groove. Now, this, see, this is really simple. Yeah, it is simple. Get that as tight as we possibly can. There's a little groove here that fits right into. Simply gonna cut this off. Now, what that does is make this tight so nothing can get in there. Now, we're gonna take this and fold it down. And I researched this carefully and looked at a lot of stuff. These are rather inexpensive. I think for a kit of 10 of these, it's like 50, 60 bucks. Well, that's something not bad. Like that. Yeah. Now, again, make sure your clear side is out. Another zip tie to go over that. And right, see what we got? Very see nice. how that works? You put the little top on? Now, there's a little top that goes on to keep anything from going okay. in. And here's your tap. Heavy duty plastic. Okay. This long end goes in. Now, something else we're going to do is we're going to take, over the years, they figured out that a 5 16 bit is about what you need. They used to do 7 16 but 5 16 seems to be the right gauge. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go in at a slight angle into the tree. And I've got this marked with a piece of tape to go an inch and a half. Okay, you're smart. Now what you're going to do, you knock a little bit of that bark off so uh -huh. you have a flat surface. You're going to make sure that the wood is not rotted underneath. When you drill in, you want to make sure that that wood is blonde. Okay. It's light colored. If it's dark, that means there's some decay. You don't want that. Here's what you're looking for weather-wise. Right now, temperatures starting to raise. Mm -hmm. It's the end of January. What happens at the end of January? These trees start producing sap to feed the buds in the top of the tree. When you look at your trees to tap, you want something that has a lot of canopy. That means there's a lot of buds. Right. So that means it's gonna be pushing a lot of sap up to feed those buds. Okay. Because in, in the spring, it gets green and you have beautiful right. foliage because it's well fed. Now, how much sap comes out of a tree? You might be surprised. If it's really flowing good, we could fill one of these bags up. These are three gallon bags. Okay. We could fill one of these bags up. The thing about this sap is it doesn't have a long shelf life. Okay. Guess what the shelf life is? A couple of days. Oh, really? If you start letting it go much longer than that, it's going to have a kind of a bitter smell to it, and your syrup's not going to be any good. So you got to check it every day? You've got to check it every day. And the more trees we can get to get to that process, right. the, the better off we'll be. We're doing a small batch. Okay. 40 to 1 ratio. If wow. we had 40 gallons, we'd get one gallon. I wouldn't need a gallon of syrup in a year. But everybody wants them. I've had a lot of requests, so you're going to have Shh, to produce. Don't tell anybody we're doing this. I'll never know. <laughs> I told them I'll get a bottle like this. <laughs> so I'm shooting for a quart. Okay. So let's think about that. If we get 10 gallons, I'd probably shoot for a little higher than that because I don't know our sugar content. Right. That's something we're going to talk about later. But we'll shoot for 10, 12 gallons. And we're going to pour that down little by little. And okay. we can do this as we're boiling it down. You don't want to get above 216 degrees. I don't want to get too much into the temperatures and all that stuff. Right. Now, that's another step. But you can keep adding to that pot as it's reducing. So if you've got a, if you've got a three gallon pot and it reduces down to a gallon, then you can keep bringing in fresh sap and reducing hmm. that down. Okay. So our goal now is to get some sap. See our marks, there's one over there, one over there. Let me see, I got some hung over there. But you know, you want it to be four or five feet tall where you can get to it. And again, I'm gonna go at a slight angle. 
see how nice yeah. that wood is in there. Inch and a half. That is, I see moisture already. Oh, it is starting to drip out. Uh-huh. Now, that's good. that was not doing that oh, yesterday. Look, it's coming okay. out. <laughs> this is not, this is making me very happy. So now what we're going to do, this was not happening yesterday, believe you me. Because it's 40 degrees. Yeah. This is on the southwest side of this tree. So as you can see, these trees are going. They're ready to ready. go. Ready, yeah. Now, this one warm day. The other day when I was doing this, the temperature was way down there. So you can see that this tree is ready to go. That makes me very happy. Now the next step is to simply put this on here and turn it. And there it is. Perfect. Now as you can see, that's kind of protected from the dirt and the dust and whatever might get in there. All right, how about that? Mm -hmm.